14 number one singles, 7 number one albums and 44 million records sold worldwide. At the height of his fame, he was worth millions, but he lost it all when his property empire collapsed and just last year he was declared bankrupt. But he's making a comeback as a solo artist and his debut album, You and Me, goes on release this weekend. Well, please welcome Shane Filan, ladies and gentlemen. You can go your own way. Good to see you. Look it's at all those weird. empty chairs beside you. I know, yeah, I just noticed that. I noticed that in rehearsals, actually, when I, I came on. Is that peculiar for you, Shane, coming on to this show for the first time, really, on your own without the, the other lads with you? It is, yeah. It's, you know, I think everything is a bit, a bit different, right? You know, it's a bit weird and it takes a bit of, bit of getting used to it. But, you know, every day is a new day and you kind of, you just take it day by day and stuff. And this is my first Let Late Show, but, you know, it's great to be on here. Your, uh, you've got friends among us. You know, I do. Thank you. Thank you. It's always nice to hear a little cheer when you come out, you know? Yeah, you need that. You need that. It's a good you sign. Good sure sign. Is. You know, I was thinking about you during the week and, and, and the fact that you did those enormously popular gigs in, in Croke Park. Yeah. And the thought that struck me, having spoken to you earlier on in the summer on the radio, was that there you were on your, on your last night, you know, 80,000 people mm. screaming and cheering and hooping and hollering. And you stood looking at them. And I'd love to know what you were thinking that night. I was thinking... <sighs> Honestly, I was just thinking about singing. I was thinking about it was the end of Westlife. It was a very sad night for all of us. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was also very happy. You know, I, was very, I was looking out and, I don't know, for the first time in a long time, I was singing and I was just enjoying it. Mm. You know, I was, I was there just to sing and I didn't think about anything. I didn't have any of the, I suppose, the stress and stuff that I had at the beginning of the tour, which was a lot worse. But I got to, I got to enjoy it. You know, I wasn't earning any money from it, but I got to enjoy it. Yeah, because just as that tour began, you sat down with the rest of the band and you told them, yeah, Some very important news. Uh, what did you say to them? I, I, I said to them, uh, it was actually right just before the band in rehearsals, I kind of told them and I just said, look lads, you know, I'm, I'm, in, a bit of, I'm in a bit of trouble financially and stuff like that and you're probably going to hear a bit, a bit of stuff in the papers very soon. Mm. Um, and obviously it broke, I think, that weekend and, you know, they, they, the boys knew that I had property and stuff like that and I'd, I'd invested in property in, you know, in Ireland or whatever and, but they didn't know how bad it was and, I, I never wanted to tell them, you know, it wasn't... Why not? It just wasn't their problem, you know, and Westlife was... We decided to split, obviously, it was the September before, and, you know, I wanted the band to go out in a high, I wanted the band to go out in a, an amazing memory, and my problems were my problems, and to be honest, I tried to, I tried to fix the problems privately myself for mm -hmm. a long time before that, mm -hmm. and even leading up to it, even when I thought... When I told the lads about it, I was thinking, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort it out, I'm trying to do this thing called an IVA and stuff like that, where you you try and sit down with the banks and come to some agreement yeah. and, and work together and work forward. Um, but, you know, that wasn't to be, but little did I know it was going to end up the way it did. I, I didn't think it would end up that, that, that bad. That bad. Think, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second, but I suppose as I'm asking you about the reactions you got, the most important person in your life is your, is your wife, Gillian. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Um, that must have been quite a moment for you to have to sit down with her and say, this is the way it's going to be. Um, was, that a, was that a moment, was a sit-down conversation you had with her? Ah, uh, she knew, no, she knew that there was, you know, she, she knew that there was kind of problems for a while, it was two or three years, you know, yeah. it wasn't, this wasn't something that happened over a space of six months, you know, it was two or three years, it was quite a difficult time for, for both of us, you know, because you think you're doing the right thing, Ryan, you know, and you kind of, we were very lucky to, to do well in Westlife and we did, you know, make a few quid and, and I thought, you know, let's invest in a property, it was just yeah. after I had Nicole, it was just after I had the baby and I started investing in property yeah. and invested practically all my money in property in Ireland, in Sligo, practically all of it. Yeah, so you were, you were worth many millions. I mean, that's what we were led to believe. At one stage, yeah. At, at one, one stage. stage. So what happened? Where did all the money go? Well, I invested into property. You know, I basically, you know, myself and my brother thought, you know, obviously the Celtic Tiger was booming. There was lots of opportunities and we thought, you know what, why not try and build a few things in Sligo? Yeah. You know, because everything was being built all around the country and, and there was other stuff going on in Sligo as well. But we saw that there were some opportunities there for like supermarkets and different things that, was, that we thought was needed. Nursing homes, there was a shortage of beds in Sligo, different things like that. And I suppose we went after things that we thought would work. And, you know, it took a long time to get planning, though. That was one of the biggest problems. You know, we had a lot of, I suppose, opposition and stuff trying to get planning, which, yeah. which delayed the thing an awful lot. But, you know... <sighs> It's hard, you know, you never, nobody would have known back then that 
this isn't a good thing. At the time, it, was, it, it felt like it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, the banks thought it was the right thing to do. I thought it was the right thing to do. Everybody was on the same page. Mm -hmm. It was a simple formula that you think would work. Um, I remember you telling me once that, that you went into a bank at one point when it was all gone, going, if not gone, yeah. pear-shaped. And it was it the bank manager who said, because of your profile, yeah. that he offered some, some advice to you. Do you remember what he said to you? Oh, um, yeah, he said, um, yeah, I, I kind of sat down and go, look, uh, this, this is, how are we going to fix this here? Because this isn't, you know, it doesn't look too fixable. And he said, you can sing, can't you? You know, so it was kind of, straight away, it was like, right, so I'm going to have to pay back this. this. This wasn't a deal. The deal wasn't that my singing career was going to pay this back. The deal was that we were going to do this together, build these things, sell these things. You make your profit, I make mine, everyone does a good investment, and we, and we walk away and shake hands. But it wasn't, it wasn't to be that way. And then I suppose I'd personally guarantee things. That was a yeah. problem. I'd personally guarantee things. So obviously they come after your, your, your income, anything you can. And for three or four years I was doing that, trying to keep it at bay. You, you, you then, I remember at one stage you, you went as far as, uh, or I should, be, I should ask you, when you eventually mm. realised that there was going to be a shortage of funds for you, at what point did you think rock bottom or... Well, did I did, you I feel this is bad? I mean, uh, like, without a doubt, the last couple of years was really bad because I just started to run out of money. You know, Westlife, no, no band could have fixed it. You know, it was that kind of a, it was that big. But literally, ATM shortage. Oh, it was, it was stuff. crazy. Like, you know, the, the money I was paying out every month was pretty crazy. Up what to was it a up month? to a hundred grand a month. You know, on, like on on, int on interest payments. On interest. And on interest payments, like average of forty, fifty, sixty grand. But some months it was a hundred. One yeah. month it was a hundred and nine. You know. And, this is every month, you know, and fair enough, you might have had a, a few quid from the band, but you're basically trying your best and you're trying to stop it from happening. You're yeah. trying to stop everything from going, it can't be this bad. And then you start to realise, right, I, I have no money left. You know, and you sit down and then you try and say, listen, how can we fix this in some way? It's not going to be fixed, mm -hmm. but how can we fix it in some way going forward? And, you know, it just, it, it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be. And then I had a, a decision to make that, in my opinion, I, was, I had no choice but to make it. You when, you, when you wanted to buy the, 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 the toy for, for, was it your son at the time? You, you, oh, Spider-Man, Patrick. What happened? It was the week after Crow Park. Um, and obviously, you know, the band was over. And yeah, I, I'd been declared bankrupt. So, you know, financially, I wasn't in a good place at all. And mm -hmm. I went to go and get, uh, Patrick was going by, uh, we're in Cobham in Surrey, and Patrick was walking by. He goes, oh, daddy, daddy, can I get that? You know, and, I looked at it, it was, oh, it, was, it, was, it was an expensive toy, it was like 36 quid or something like that. I was like, you know, I said, oh, I don't know about that now, you know, and I went to the, to the ATM, I said, right, we'll, we'll try and get it, went to the ATM, and I had only 450 quid in it. And that's what I had to my name, literally to my name, a week after selling out two Crow Parks. You know, but that's, that's you, the position I was in. Did you buy the toy? No, I didn't buy the toy, no. Why did you have to buy your, your wedding ring back? Because it was worth more than 500 I think it's 500 euros, the allocated amount, and I didn't want them to sell it. It's my wedding ring, so I wanted to buy it back. Do you, do you blame the, the banks? Do you blame the economy? Or do you blame yourself for I think, I think, look, I think every decision you make in life, I think, you know, ev everybody's to a certain degree to blame in it. But I, I'm not going to sit there and blame the banks. It's not their fault, yeah. you know, because... And, you know, people can say it's my fault too, but that's their opinion. You know, I think yeah. for me... Because you know that's what a lot of people are probably saying. Of you know, course. And they're saying, well, he had all that money and he blew, you know, it was the roulette wheel but and I, you but, blew it on the wrong side. I know, but I had all that money and I put all that money into Ireland. I put it all into Sligo, into my hometown. You know, and I think I could, put it, I could have put it into any country in the world. Yeah. You know, and fair enough, I did it and that was my decision and I have to, I have to take the brunt of that. So the business... To, that's what happens. So going bankrupt then, Shane, you, you, to do that, you were in the UK. Did you flee... Ireland to go to the UK, or no, see, did, is, do you want to is, put that right? Yeah, I think this is another thing. You know, like, I have a house in Surrey for the last eight years. Right. And I've been there an awful... I've probably lived more in England in the last 15 years I lived in Ireland. But so you had residential status. I was, I was a complete resident in, Ireland, okay. or in, in England, but I had a house in Sligo, obviously, as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, ha I had that option. And I, I think people can give out about that, too. And, every, again, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but for me... I have to do what's right for my kids. Yeah. I have to make a decision that protects my three children did you and leave my anyone, wife, and that's it. Did you leave anyone hanging financially? Obviously, the, the, there's personal creditors that were, I suppose, yeah, the banks and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm still working with my trustee. It's not, this isn't, like, over for me. Yeah. 
you know, it's something that I still have to work with the trustee and sell all the property, sell all the stuff I can and, and work with them for another, you know, another, another few years. Has it and it's, it's not something that just goes away and it's 12 months. The people have that perception as well. It's not just a 12 month thing. So I'm going to still go and be working hard and whatever I earn, they'll, they'll get some of that. But speaking, you're here tonight, you're playing your new song, if your new album out and yeah. you, you've gone solo. Are you going to have to work harder than you've ever worked before now? With, no, that, with, that, I, with that in mind. But not, it's not, not even financially. I'm going to have to work hard in general for my career. I'm starting again. This yeah. isn't Westlife anymore. There's no 50 million albums behind me or, you know, Crow Parks and stuff like that. This is, I have to start again musically. And yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm up for that challenge. I, I've made a great album. I think it's a great album. Um, and I've lots of singles to come. It's, it's going to be something that's going to be... It took eight months to make this album, so it's not something I'm going to do again next year. Yeah. Um, Are you happy with the reaction this oh, summer, the way it's going? It's and absolutely... Like, the album's out today, so I don't know. You'll have to ask me next week. Yeah, but in terms of uh, singles, I mean, you're, you're yeah, going to no, a lot of play for your first single. Everything is going amazing. Everything to me has got an amazing reaction. It's getting yeah. played more on radio now. We're trying to get it off the radio now to play the new the one. Near, the next one. About you, yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's early days, Ryan, but for me, it's, you know... I'm starting again musically in every sense of the word, but I'm loving the opportunity. I'm getting the opportunity to sing, and that's what I love to do, and that's all I want to do. You know? uh, you, you did, did you write all the tracks yourself on this yeah, album? Yeah, okay, which so. is a new thing as well. That was, that was amazing. You know, I got to spend eight months making the album, and there was no kind of pressure time-wise, and I got to songwrite you know, in Nashville and the UK. Obviously and do you, a lot have, do you ever feel self-confident? Do you, have, do you ever have confidence issues putting yourself out there as much as you were no, doing that? No, it's funny, but it's funny when you're... I find being solo, I find that, you know, there's less, there's less nerves, there's less, I don't know, there's, probably because I have nothing to compare to, even though I was in Westlife, obviously, I've still nothing to compare to as a, as a solo artist, as a person. Yeah. So I'm starting, I'm, I'm, I have to build this, and it'll take time, and I know that, and, you know, it's one of those things you kind of just, don't set your targets, don't look too far ahead, you know, what I get, I get, whatever's meant to be for me will be, and I'll, I'll, I'll take that so and what's your, I'll be what, happy. How do you feel about the future? Are you, are you hopeful? Are you worried? Are you nervous? I'm are you all excited? of the above. Are you? I am, of course, yeah. I'm excited, very excited, Good. if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm very excited because there's lots of plans internationally. I'm going back to Asia next week. I just came back from Asia. Um, there's lots of plans for you know, international Europe, Australia, stuff like that, even America, in the second half of next year. So mm -hmm. they're all stuff that's, you know, I'm going to get to sing all over the world, and I don't know where it's going to go, but it's exciting. It yeah. is exciting now, and it's the start, but... You know, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. It's very good to have you on here, as, uh, all on your own, Yo, and now you're going to sing on your own once uh, yeah. for, for the first time on the Late Late Show. We're looking forward to it immensely. So, Shane, good luck into the future for you and your family. Thank you very and much. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank Shane, finally, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks so much.